Hello, this is Nation Beat. I am General Novel bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. The Department of Health and Wellness addresses concerns surrounding the transitioning of staff to the Millennium Medical Complex. A concerted effort is underway by the government of St. Lucia to ensure that projects embarked upon are achieved with greater efficiency. St. Lucians interested in the hospitality sector are encouraged to take advantage of a new NAP initiative and counting the spin-off benefits of the Roots and Soul Festival. Permanent Secretary of the Department of Health and Wellness, Felix St. Hill, has cleared the air on a number of issues that have surfaced with regard to the transitioning of staff to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. In a statement, St. Hill said these issues seem to undermine the efforts of the Department of Health and Wellness to advance or improve the provision of services within the health sector. Let me reassure all staff members of the three institutions which comprise the Millennium Heights Medical Complex namely the Victoria Hospital, which is being transitioned into the OKEU Hospital, the National Mental Wellness Center, and the Turning Point Rehabilitation Center, that I have no directive to any of our staff members to resign the positions in order to facilitate applications to the new statutory organization. In fact, oftentimes the policymakers have tried to reassure staff members of the security of tenure and the fact that no one will be losing their jobs as a result of our commissioning efforts. As the administrative head of the Department of Health and Wellness, administrative directives which are issued to staff and management come under my purview and no other office. The issue of reapplication for any position at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex bears with if the consideration of a public-private partnership is being explored and would be determined by the conditions agreed to in the public-private partnership. So there is nothing definite about reapplication for any jobs. It may be one of several options. If at all, we have to pursue transitioning of staff to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. A concerted effort is underway by the government of St. Lucia to ensure that projects embarked upon are achieved with greater efficiency and benefits to the people. The thrust is in keeping with the decision by the CARICOM Secretariat to implement a results-based management RBM system to arrest the long-standing issues that have plagued the efficiency of the organization and its agencies. The RBM system is a framework that guides the execution of programs through sustained monitoring, reporting and accountability. The Ministry of Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation is preparing to introduce a delivery unit that will be tasked to accomplish the goal. The CARICOM results-based management RBM system is expected to benefit member states significantly. According to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Development, Philip Dalsu, St. Lucia is looking to take advantage of the system. He explained that other measures will be taken to ensure a smooth implementation. The Permanent Secretary added that St. Lucia is currently in discussions with the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, to assist in this venture. We are actually in discussions with um, uh, CDB to help in developing what we call a delivery unit, which would help us in developing that results-oriented framework. At the level of the public service, where I used to be as a, the PS of public service, um, job descriptions are also being developed with a sort of results orientation framework, performance orientation framework. So that would align much more closely with the performance appraisal and development instruments. So when you look at a job description now, it's really results based. The Permanent Secretary also highlighted the importance of the implementation of the results-based management system. They also explained that member states are tasked with a number of responsibilities and with the new system in place, assessments can be conducted. The resulting reports will then be made available to stakeholders. As we can see when the reports are prepared, where the bottlenecks are, who is falling short.
and what do we need to do, what interventions we need to take to improve or remove those bottlenecks. So yes, um, there are elements of RBM that have been introduced in St. Lucia, and um, we are also looking forward to working with the, the Secretariat so that we can help to improve the implementation rate as it relates to the, the regional development agenda. A big part of the implementation of the RBM system is sensitization. While a concerted effort is being made to sensitize stakeholders in St. Lucia, Dalso opined that there is still a lot of groundwork to be done. Thousands of students are back in the classroom as a new academic year opened Monday. The Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development personally welcomed students in a visit to several schools. More in this report. The annual allocation of just over $1 million for the repair of schools on the island for years have proven insufficient to alleviate the infrastructural issues of the large number of schools which require repair. As such, this year, government invested 10 times the usual amount to ensure the comfort of students and teachers alike ahead of the reopening of school. Minister with Responsibility for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, says while there is still work to be done, the $10 million allocated has been stretched well in improving 80% of structural issues in schools. Let me thank everyone who's been involved in delivering this rehabilitation program. I think across the island, the students and teachers are reasonably pleased. Admittedly, and I've said it before, $10 million only represents a quarter of what it is estimated that we would need to bring every school on island to an acceptable standard. But that injection of $10 million, um, of course, has gone a long way to bring some relief to our teachers and our students. One school in particular, the Miku Primary School, encountered some issues with lingering paint fumes in a few classrooms and caused some parents to express their concern and even pull their children out of school. However, school principal Fern Donnelly says remedial arrangements have been sought to house affected students. I want to categorically say we will not be housing the students in the classrooms upstairs where the parents were concerned, in which the parents were concerned about. We will ensure that no student is allowed on that block from tomorrow. We had works done on most of our blocks. We have four blocks in total, and three of these are totally refurbished from the inside to the outside. We have freshly painted walls. We have new ceilings. We have new light bulbs. Electrical works were done. We we have new furniture, we have a brand new school and for this we are very grateful. The education minister, as has been her custom on the first day of class, visited several schools to witness firsthand the work accomplished and to greet teachers and students wishing them well in the new academic year. She addressed the assembly of the Grosselet Secondary, noting the school's recent successes in CXCCSEC and its elevation to a center of excellence for sports. We remain committed to ensuring that all our graduates are exposed to some core subjects, but that they also have the option of pursuing certain subject areas, be it in the area of sport, in the case of Grosley Secondary School, and with respect to the Anger Secondary School in the area of creative arts and culture. The minister says the remaining work on schools will be accomplished utilizing weekends and the upcoming Christmas break. She expressed her satisfaction with her tour of schools and disclosed that Monday's meeting of cabinet ministers was suspended to allow cabinet MPs a chance to visit schools within their districts. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. St. Lucians with an interest in the hospitality sector are being targeted through an initiative spearheaded by the National Apprenticeship Program in conjunction with Monroe College. We get the details from Geraldine Bissett Joseph. The National Apprenticeship Program, NAP, continues to bring employment to St. Lucians in the South. The National Apprenticeship Program was established in February 2018. The program was implemented due to the high levels of unemployment in the South amongst the youth. The initiative works by identifying the personal problems faced by those who are unemployed, 
Once these are established, the program works alongside private organizations and individuals to place those seeking employment within vacant posts where qualifications, personality and experience fit the criteria. The organization also works at developing the skills of the youth, allowing their potential to develop. NAP's latest venture includes a qualification and skills-based collaboration with Monroe College. Our other mandate has been to provide training in the field of hospitality. And um, we do appreciate that with the hotels that are on stream to, to be um, set up, to be developed in the south of the island, there will be a demand for persons. And so presently we are um, conducting some interviews with Monroe College. And I need to say that when we, when we advertised um, this training opportunity, within two weeks we had more than 100 persons coming in to register. And Monroe has asked us for about 160 persons for the first semester to start off with and we registered over 200 persons. And 200 persons are now being interviewed over a period of three days um, to start off training in hospitality. And the, this training will prepare them for work, not just within the local tourist industry, the hotels, but also for the cruise ship sector. We are looking at providing training for the cruise ship sector. And what we are doing at the National Apprenticeship Program to facilitate this is to provide the support to those individuals so that they can access the funds to, um, to pay for this training. Those who make the cut will be lucky enough to benefit from the funding process established by the St. Lucia Development Bank. Every individual who's accepted will be able to access the funding from SLDB to pay for this training. But the interesting thing about it is that they, they do not have to pay back the full amount. The government will provide part of this fund as a grant to those individuals. So they would only have to pay back a portion of it. But additionally, during the three months of training, we understand that these are persons who are unemployed and they have very little resources. And so we are also providing them with a monthly stipend to meet the cost of transportation, to meet the cost of food, and to assist them in getting themselves certified. For the Government Information Service, I am Jolene Bissett Joseph reporting. The Ancillary Canaries constituency recently hosted its first youth and sports conference. The conference was aimed at not only inspiring the youth of the district, but also to give some indication of the avenues that can be taken for each individual to reach and obtain their goals. Organizers of the event, the Department of Youth Development and Sports, brought together members from a variety of local clubs and organizations in an effort to give them a platform for expression during the event. The participants were encouraged to come together with the intention of bringing about a better tomorrow for all constituency youth. It has always been, will always be a challenge for young persons in any community because there are so many problems and issues that we have. But the good thing about problems and issues is that they can be solved. And I want to invite you today to take this program very seriously and to start a journey of development, to start a journey of ensuring that whatever issues that we have, that we can overcome them. National Youth Council President Jeshurun Andrew addressed the crowd by reiterating the message of working and building together. He encouraged attendees not to be afraid to speak out and make a difference. As young people, we need to be able to motivate ourselves. Self-motivation is something that is very important. And if we can achieve that, then we can always motivate those around us to propel themselves to achieving their dreams and their goals. The National Youth Council would like to wholeheartedly support this initiative, this program. And we hope that the young people can voice their opinions, their concerns. Sometimes you may sit in your part of the community and you may have brilliant ideas, you may have things that you think can work and you don't get the opportunity to voice those concerns, those ideas in, in, a, in a setting where persons can come together and try to put together programs. So today I would like to encourage 
every one of you to not be shy, but if there's something that you think can work in your community, whether it be more on the spot side of things or whether it be directed to youth development, that you express yourself today and, and, and share and use all of the information that you have to put together programs that will be beneficial to the young people in your community. By sharing a personal story which related directly to the event, Parliamentary Representative for Ancillary Canaries, the Honorable Dominic Fede, urged the youth to be inspired and act now. My younger brother Sergio, who played for the Windwards, I used to say to him that if you want to be an exceptional sportsman, you can't live an average life. You can't be like the other kids. Your time of going to bed cannot be the same time as the other kids. Your time to get up, to go and train, cannot be like the other kids. Your diet cannot be like the other kids. Your lifestyle cannot be like the other kids. Those sacrifices must be made. You know, the lifespan of a sportsman is so, so narrow, very, very short. And usually it's, at the peak, you're between 17, 28. That's a very, very short window of your life. And you know, when you pass that 28 threshold and you started to get to the 30 mark, you know that you're going downhill. And so it is important to maximize the moment in your prime of fitness, in your prime of youth, in your prime of energy to make sure that you have the very, very best career. Representatives from the Department of Youth Development and Sports went on to say that the nation's youth are seen as those at the forefront of change and innovation with the spirit to make things happen. This is Nation Beat. Coming up next, the spin-off benefits of the Roots and Soul Festival. Did you know that one pint of blood can save up to three lives? Did you know that it is safe to give blood even if you have a tattoo? Did you know that the average patient uses two pints of blood? Did you know that giving blood can reduce your risk of cardiovascular diseases? Blood connects us all. Share life, give blood. For further information, you can contact the St. Lucia Blood Bank Service at 45 25430. Email us at slubloodbank at gmail.com. Save a life, give blood. Children who eat unhealthily are more likely to become obese by the age of 14. Suffering from type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure and certain forms of cancer. Be aware of what your child eats and what they do throughout the day. This message is brought to you by the Belize Cancer Society, Healthy Caribbean Coalition, Childhood Obesity Prevention Alliance Belize, and the Office of the Special Envoy for Women and Children. Just days after the curtains came down on the second installment of the Roots and Soul Festival, officials are assessing the benefits of the event to people. As we hear in this report by Anisia Antoine, local artists are increasingly sharing the main stage spotlight along with due earnings. The Roots and Soul Festival is the third event classified under the St. Lucia Soleil Summer Festival. The event, which took place at the Pigeon Island National Landmark over the weekend, welcomed hundreds of individuals who enjoyed a cultural-infused lineup. In a post-briefing with the Minister for Local Government and Culture, she stated that the inclusion of more local artists and vendors allowed the economic benefits to be felt throughout the length and breadth of the island. We were heartened at the fact 
that we had a number of local artists who were able to perform and to be of international standard. We had Stacey Charles, Shane Ross, um, who performed on stage, Michelle Obertin, and also Taj Weeks, who were locals, who were part of this cast of um, um, international artists that we had um, performing for us. And uh, what we've always wanted, you know, as a country is to ensure that our artists are given um, center stage um, at main events in St. Lucia. So we're able to achieve that, and I think that will continue to grow. Um, within the, the plans for as we, as we look to expand our festival. We also looked at the whole question of the opportunity for persons to participate in vending um, and selling St. Lucian crafts and arts. And so all of these things are the type of things that we would want um, to continue to happen during our festival. According to the minister, there was a large influx of persons who came to St. Lucia to be a part of the Soleil Summer Festival, with most hotels recording high occupancy rates. She highlighted the significance of the various summer festivals, given that the lowest arrival rates are usually recorded during the summer season. What we wanted to was to deliver a successful event, incident-free event, and that happened for St. Lucia. So we're quite happy with where we are going with the festivals. Um, St. Lucians are beginning to embrace it. When we started two years ago, it was a challenge um, because you know it's always difficult to accept change. But I think as we continue to evaluate our programs, as we continue to assess and infuse the suggestions um, that keep coming through from the public um, and persons who are interested in the advancement of our country, I think we can only continue to strengthen um, this program. In October, St. Lucia will be celebrating at San Heritage Month, the last event of the St. Lucia Soleil Summer Festival. Senator Honorable Fortuna Bellrose noted that the public should expect a very diverse program to help discover who St. Lucians are as a people. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Minister for Health and Wellness has called on St. Lucians to be more optimistic about their outlook on the HIV epidemic. More in this report from Miguel Morissette. The fear surrounding the emerging HIV epidemic in the 1980s largely persists today. Michelle Sidibe, UNAIDS Executive Director, said, We must not be scared of the future. If we quicken the pace, we can reach 40 million with HIV treatment by 2020, unquoted. HIV is not a death sentence, with the spoken words of Health Minister, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, whilst addressing media personnel at the Caribbean Cytometric Analytical Society 15th Summit Opening Cocktail Reception in St. Lucia. We still have so much stigma attached to persons living with HIV to the point where a lot of people do not even want to come out to be treated. And tonight we have heard about getting tested and treated and that that is so very important and vital for that segment of society. Many St. Lucians still believe that HIV, being infected with HIV, is a death sentence. And it is good that Sikas is here to educate at least the people who will be participating, you know, to educate them that it is not a death sentence, um, that there is help, there is hope, and you can continue to live a very healthy and long life, even if you are infected with HIV. So for St. Lucia, this is a very, very important um, event that is taking place right here, and I hope that it gets out to the public. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Caribbean Cytometry and Analytical Society, Professor Clive Landis, assures St. Lucians and by extension Caribbean people, the HIV treatment works. Currently, we treat HIV patients and we can save their lives. And I want to just repeat that because it's very important. HIV has long ceased to be a death sentence. Uh, you can live very well with HIV. But the key point is that when someone is on treatment with HIV, then they also become non-infectious because the HIV is suppressed in their body and cannot be transmitted. And we know that because in the Eastern Caribbean and in parts of uh, the Caribbean, we've been very successful at suppressing HIV in women's bodies who are pregnant and they cannot transmit the virus to their own child. So, uh, there are now seven countries in the Caribbean which have been certified by the World Health Organization for having eliminated HIV transmission from pregnant mothers to their children. 
And the basis of that is very simple. The treatment of HIV in the mum's bodies suppresses the virus to the point where it cannot be transmitted to the baby. And the baby is free of HIV. And guess what? The same thing happens with sexual transmission of HIV. If the person who has HIV is on treatment, then that person, he or she, cannot pass the virus on to their sexual partner. And so the minister has reminded us that we need to be, I think, a bit more positive about where we are right now in the HIV epidemic. We can save lives, and when we place people on treatment, we can um, inhibit the spread of this disease. Health officials are stressing the fact that the elimination of HIV is a community effort and are calling for the elimination of societal barriers as they deter people from coming forward for treatment. The SICA summit runs from August 26th to the 30th under the theme From Care to Cure Towards the Elimination of HIV. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morissette reporting. Residents of Grosley who have given dedicated service as community leaders, activists, youth advocates, or simply inspired others have been formally recognized for their efforts. Here's Chevroy Marius with the highlights of the inaugural Lilet Awards. On Saturday, August 25, 2018, the parliamentary representative for Grosley, Honorable Leonard Montoot, held a ceremony to honor committed community members who have contributed towards community development and students who have excelled in the common entrance and CXE examinations. The student awardees were Trey Phillip from the Dame Pullet Primary School, Janelle Richardson from the Grand Riviere Primary School, Juanita Nathaniel from the Grosely Primary School, Amelia Rosemond from the Moshi Primary School, Cletus Adonis, from the Grosley Secondary School, and the top common entrance achiever was Ms. April Dagana from the Camille Rene Memorial School. According to the parliamentary representative, the initiative was well received and said that the new decision to recognize community heroes must be continued. It is my hope and my in intention that these awards become institutionalized and that we have annual awards for generations to come. We have a number of pioneers in this constituency. We have a number of people who have made great strides. We have a lot of people who have made contributions, very often unheralded, very often unrecognized, very often not even appreciated. It is time that we take some time off, not only to publicly make generalized comments about recognizing the stalwarts who have gone before us and the contributions that they have made, but to single out the people who by and large have been making their contribution quite quietly without any fanfare and without any recognition. Community members will recognize for their contribution to community growth and development in the fields of sports, youth development, business, community service, arts and entertainment, politics and long-standing community group service. The awardees receive gold and silver medals designed by Mr. Tardius Montoot. The Lillette Award Ceremony was held at the Golden Palm Hotel, Rodney B. From the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Development, Sports, Culture and the Local Government, I am Chevre Marius. And that's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. I am Janelle Norville.